Welcome back, friends and fans. It's another pickup game with the Word of Blake list. It was quite literally a case of, hey, the miniatures are on the board. Let's throw some dice. The Word of Blake is once again rolling onto the field with the exact same list from the same last bat rep. Hopefully I'm a little bit smarter for it. And on the other end of the table, we have some new units from the 3145 TRO for the Capellan Confederation and some units that must be absolutely archaic by comparison. Uh, some level one units, the Hunchback and the Enforcer. The Predator Tank Destroyer and the Tian Zong are actually fantastic designs. The Tian Zong is a gauze boat while the Predator is a 6-9 uh, tank destroyer. It's, it's like a really amped up Hetzer tank destroyer. It's, it's really cool. And since the artwork is cool and I would love to buy like dozens of them, you could expect the miniature to actually be on the store shelves sometime after my son exits college. But trying to learn from my past mistake, I go ahead and send the Light Ray and the Malak, who have similar movement profiles together so that they can back each other up, and try to get the C3 network close, and I move the LRM carriers forward cautiously. I, I have a wide avenue of fire, I don't need to move them that close, and I need to let the C3I do as much of the work as possible. That said, I get real aggressive with the Malak and the Light Ray while he tries to respond in kind. It's, it's interesting because, like I said in the last bat rep, it's very important to have the ability to dictate the range and the speed at which the game is taking place. And in this case, I have it in spades. Because he's using some really cheap 3025 mechs, they don't have the speed to keep up. They've got an issue where their range brackets are unoptimized and they often are really short range to be effective and they have to run across the field to do it. All his units are like that, except for the Predator Tech Destroyer, which at 6'9 is terrifying. In fact, it's so terrifying, I start loading all the ammo that I can into that tank destroyer, but it's got a pretty high mod. It's sitting there right behind the woods, and I can't quite put enough damage to put it down. It doesn't have a whole lot of armor. Its, it's front armor is actually really nice, like you'd expect from a tank destroyer, but the side armor is rather lacking, so I need to get a side shot on that guy. C3I is actually already paying dividends as the range between the Legacy and the Tank Destroyer is something like four hexes, but he's within line of sight of all the LRM carriers, and I just start plastering it, just filling in the record box just as fast as I can. Uh, I need to kill it again. It's, uh, it's the most worthwhile threat against me at this point. And though he has a couple good shots, he needs like an 8 plus to tag the Legacy with the tank destroyer, I do believe. He misses. As a matter of fact, he makes shots with most of his mechs and everything whips. We don't know what he was aiming at, but I'm sure grateful that it wasn't me. His hunchback moves out into the open right in front of the LRM carrier, and I begin hitting it at long range. I don't need to see 3i for that because all the units are out of place for it. And he's got a kind of a flanking position. That's really scary. There's nothing I can really do to stop it, so the LRM carrier begins diverting fire. No longer supports the center element and begins defending itself. It manages to hit the hunchback and tear open the front torso armor on nearly all the sections, uh, taking nearly half of it off. Everything connects. Meanwhile, the Predator Tank Destroyer begins moving as fast as it can, placing the pedal to the metal and then running towards the LRM carrier in front of it as fast as it can. It's got an L LBX-20 on it and needs to get as close as it can to get the shot off. I dispatch the Legacy at it. He's exposing his rear armor. I'm going to have to at least try to get a motive crit because I need to slow the darn thing down so that the LRM carriers can do something about it. There's actually something coming into play right about now. When the Tian Zong gets closer, it actually has an Angel ECM system. And we're counting out the hexes because even though I do have an ECM boat on the table, the Malak C has only a Guardian. It's not strong enough to ECCM the thing. So the C3 network is slowly shutting down, even though I have some wonderful targets to shoot at. But we're reaching a point where every LRM carrier is already defending itself or backing up or trying to preserve itself, so the value of the C3 again might be a little bit negated by my hastiness to get the LRM carriers into any kind of firing position. Nonetheless, there is some groundhog mole somewhere that has been absolutely decimated because the countryside has been littered with holes from Goss rifles slivering off pieces of metal at some fraction of the speed of light with LBX cannon rounds flying off into the middle of nowhere. We're talking seven and eight plus shots. He's missing them all. It is absolutely amazing, and I am completely grateful that once again, 
Blake is looking out for me because the word is being dispatched just as eloquently as possible, and soon these heretics will know the true value of heresy. It's an interesting dichotomy in Battletech because he's got some really old units. They're effective, but they're just not effective enough. The Enforcer just doesn't put down enough damage at a very range bracket. It's not fast enough to chase anything down. The Hunchback is in an odd position trying as a flanking unit. It's just too far out to actually do much with its AC-20. And now, since he's taken uh, quite a beating, he is going to move it behind the woods, away from the LRM carrier, so that the LRM carrier can't take another shot at it. I've completely learned my lesson at this point. I begin backpedaling the LRMs. It doesn't matter where I'm going, I just need to open up the range bracket because I've got a couple turns that I've got to worry about where these slow lumbering intersphere mechs are going to eventually close the distance and I just need to keep them out of the minimum range for just a few more turns while I take care of that darn Predator tank destroyer that decided to overshoot the LRM carrier. It didn't manage to do anything, but now it's just flying into the back lines, trying to make me drag more assets away from the front line so that the Tianzong and the Enforcer can take on the LRM carrier unopposed. And even though my opponent can't seem to hit the broadside of a barn, in fact I think he's done a grand total of five points of damage up until this point, I can't kill that tank destroyer. I mean I've hit it a couple times but it just won't die. I kick it, I shoot it. It's like it's made of armor that's made of Nokia's, you know? Noconium armor? If that's a thing. Hunchback emerges from the woods while I keep moving everything back as far as I can. The Light Ray begins chasing down the tank destroyer while the Malak begins pulling back. The LRM carrier begins pulling back as well. That's in the center end of the board, but I, I, there's nothing I can do. I have to accept that it is going to be assaulted by something. The Enforcer is closing in on it. The Tianzong is getting as close as it can, and its ECM is just shutting down the C3 from everything else, so I can't even give it supporting fire. The LRM carriers at this point are all firing on their own recognizance without the benefit or the advantage of the C3 network. Nonetheless, my opponent decides to go for broke. I've always said that when things get dicey, get risky. Battletech is a game that rewards extravagant risk every now and then. So he decides to make the Enforcer actually do something. He's going to try to death from above the LRM carrier because he can't seem to kill it any other conventional way. And I was concerned for a little while because my luck with this has actually been pretty bad. I tell people don't do it, and then they do, and then it works. But... My opponent hadn't made a roll all the, uh, the entire day, so I decided, hey, why not? Just just let him go, because this is going to be the uh, the effect of his dice roll. I don't really have to really worry about anything, because he, he couldn't save himself if he wanted to. Tank Destroyer finally dies in the northern end of the board, but not after I went ahead and offered my opponent a re-roll, because he made another shot at the LRM carrier, missed, and it was like a 7+. Plus. I figured, man, that's that's just harsh. That's not even sportsmanlike. So he got the re-roll, it actually connected, it did a lot of damage to the side of the LRM carrier, but since this is the Word of Blake version, it had enough armor to take it. There was a crit roll, but thankfully it was okay. Now that the Enforcer is actually close enough to do the Death From Above, and I happen to have forgotten momentarily that he intended to do that, I move the LRM carrier first to my losing initiative step, and then he drops the Enforcer on it. I, again, I'm not really too scared because he's going to miss the roll. He's been missing everything. I move the Malak over to take care of the Hunchback because it has finally shown up to the scene and because it is so slow, the Malak is able to get back shots on it. It's got enough firepower where it can rip open the back. The Tianzong makes itself clear as it enters the opening area of the board and has its choice of targets. Its ECM bubble has shut down everything, so now the C3 is completely useless. With the light rays work done, with the tank destroyer a burning carcass, I go ahead and let it hide behind a hill. It doesn't have quite the movement points to get so close to the Tianzong that it would be able to kick or otherwise equalize itself in that, some, that sort of manner. So I go ahead and make it hide so that it can come out the next turn. And he manages to destroy, since it has nothing other to shoot at, the one LRM carrier. Around then we go ahead and call it. He's destroyed one LRM carrier. The rest of his units have all got some sort of internal structure damage or are otherwise faltering. It's a win for the word of Blake. And that's been an Ouchie's Bat Rap. And thanks for watching. And if you're ever in the Memphis area, look us up, man. We'd love to get a game in with you guys.